Recently, one of you asked me to do a Tangle toy fidget collection video. I've never done one of those before. I've talked about Tangles and toys individually, but never all at once. Um, now, one of the reasons why I've held off doing this for such a long time is I have Tangles in so many different boxes across, I don't know, an entire house. I don't know where they all are. So I'm going to talk about all the ones I have, but this is not my entire collection. The first one I have is this. It's very battered. Um, half of it is missing and the different bits and pieces at the ends are broken as well. This was the first tangle I ever had. Uh, my auntie gave this to me for Christmas 2003. So that's how old it is. And yes, uh, evidence. That is me playing The Sims. Now this tangle was actually sent to me around 2013. Um, oh, it's dusty. Every single piece on this tangle has a word on it. So for children, they try and make sentences with the tangles. I never actually used it in that way. For me, I was just excited by the fact this was the longest small tangle I ever had, without piecing them all together, of course. Um, it's like a big necklace, this. Now this is not a Tangle toy, this is a baby rattle. My parents gave this to me for Christmas 2013 um, and it doesn't come apart, of course, because it's a baby toy. It doesn't come apart either. Oh no, no, they're stuck together. <laughs> I do find this one quite frustrating because it's very limited. Of course it's for a toddler. Uh, and the other reason is because I find that annoying. There were a couple of years of my life where I would have a tangle with me 24-7. Wherever I was, I had to have a tangle uh, at work, at college or school. And because I carried them everywhere with me, I was always losing them. Um, don't worry, I didn't go through one a week, but I've lost a fair few in my time. I lost one in the science museum, actually. I left it on the table and uh, somebody came along and picked it up thinking it was part of an exhibit. So I do actually have some tangles that are still in their boxes. Uh, I've yet to open them. I'm saving them in case I lose any of my other bits and bobs. This was one of my favourite ones for a while. Um, it's a textured tangle. Lots of tangle toys and fidget companies tend to go overboard um, with the stimulus, with the different shapes and textures. Sometimes that's good, it depends on the type of person that wants to purchase them. Uh, but for lots of us, sometimes it can be just that step too, step too far. And this specific tangle was okay. There was just enough. Um, but not too much that it aggravated me. So that's one of my top tangles, the textured tangle. Now this one is a fairy tangle. This is actually my second. I lost my first one. No, I have got one. I have. There you go. I must admit that the fairy tangle is not one of the better tangles out there. It's good at first, but the more you play with it, the first sort of uh, disintegrates and it feels really strange after a while. So this is my fairy tangle, and uh, as you can see, bits of it are rubbing off. It's quite faded, actually. But for some people, a fairy tangle is perfect. Um, it's, it's all down to texture, what you like. Okay, now we're just getting sentimental. These are the ones that I carried around at college and university. Um, they feel really tacky. That noise is not therapeutic at all. That's, that's, that's annoying. I used to hold onto these on the bus or in art class and the one that I lost got covered in ink many, many years ago. Um, had blue splodges all over it. Let's go for something that isn't a Tangle toy. Uh, this. I think I found this in Tiger a couple of years ago. It's a massage ball. It's a flower pot massage ball. And it's so soothing and cold and nice. I like using this on my temples there. I'd say this is more of a distraction than a fidget toy. Um, one of you sent this to me. I, I have no idea what it's called, um, but I love what it does. Look at that. For those of you who have no idea what this is, I will try and demonstrate. <laughs> you get the idea. Well, that didn't go very well. I tried. Um, so yeah, let's see if I can create a neck ruff with this. I think it's a ruff. I hope it's a ruff. The neck things in the Tudor times. Uh, William Shakespeare wore them. The next thing I have is a toy from Clicks, and I was given this in 2009 by the company. 
I've seen lots of fidget toys in my time, but I haven't seen anything quite like this um, or played with something like this. There are some really good things about it. It makes these noises. I don't know about you, but I find that really satisfying. Um, that's probably why it's called clicks. But a big negative is that when you play with it quite um, quickly and aggressively, uh, it can pinch your skin if you're too fast. Uh, but nice and slow is okay. Now this has to be one of my favourite tangles of all time and it's huge. I think it's just under a metre long when it stretches out. And my mum and I bid for this on eBay uh, in 2008. I managed to buy a gigantic one. Look at it, it's massive! But I'm not taking this to school. This has faded over the years. That was definitely blue when I got it. I think this is a tangle that you'd reach for when you're really angry. Just gotta have something to wrap your hands around. It does come apart like the other tangles, um, so you can create circles and shapes, handcuffs. And I've never seen another one this size before. Um, I'd love to know if they made even bigger ones. The next thing I have are called snake bracelets or snake necklaces. So what you do is you wrap it around your wrist like this. I've seen some people wear them as necklaces like this and then they'll make shapes. Um, Ta-da! Personally, I don't like it around my neck. It makes me feel a bit nervous. Um, so I like it on my wrist. My favorite snake necklace broke last year. Oh, I was so heartbroken. Um, this is it. So this used to be like this, rigid. It just snapped one day when I was playing with it and uh, the family I was staying with tried to help me fix it. And although we got it all back on a chain like this, it's too loose and it doesn't work in the way that a snake necklace should. It's got a certain resistance. Um, as I said, it's, it's quite rigid. One of the things about it is you can make shapes and uh, it sort of holds its shape like that. Can you see? You can crush it, you can extend it. Um, it's like an adult tangle. There's more variation with this. So this one has died. I'm just keeping it because of nostalgia. Um, and maybe one day I'll be able to fix it so it's like this again. Out of all the fidget toys in this video, the snake necklace bracelets are what I would recommend for adults because they can go under the radar when you're at work, when you're at college, university. It's easy to hide a fidget toy as a form of jewellery, whereas tangle toys, uh, they're very obvious and they do look like a toy. Uh, so so many people get distracted by this or ask to borrow it when in fact, no, you need it. Um, so when it's this, it's, it's more um, personal. People are less likely to ask to play with it because it's jewellery. That's not to say that adults can't use this, it depends on the situation. Uh, but yeah, in public, I think these are better. Talking about things that go under the radar, fidget rings, spinny rings, spinner rings. I have four spinner rings, three of which I bought at the Trichotillomania Learning Centre conference in 2011, uh, and they were my first ever spinner rings. This one here I have on my thumb practically every waking moment, uh, whereas these two I wear less frequently. One of the main reasons is because over time I've become very attached to this, uh, but the spinny ring spins a lot better than on the other two, and it's quiet, whereas this small one here, it's, uh, it's very loud. <laughs> And again, that can be quite distracting. Not everyone gets on with rings. Some people don't like wearing jewellery full stop. Uh, but I really do recommend spinny rings. Oh yes. One of you sent this to me a few years ago and it came in the original packaging from the early 1990s, late 1980s. And it's a glow in the dark tangle. I can't really show you, even with my lights off, but it does, it glows in the dark. It needs charging though. You need to leave it in front of daylight or a lamp and then it glows. Um, and it's pink. It's like pink and like a lemony colour. It's a bit bigger than the normal tangles, um, but as an adult I quite like that. It's like a really good size for me to play with. Um, not too big, not too small. And then I discovered the chrome tangles, and I haven't got it with me. It's one of those tangles which I've misplaced somewhere. It's in a box. I will find it at some point and kick myself for it. Uh, but that is one of the most perfect tangles out there. It's uh, beautiful to hold, it's heavy, um, it's just the perfect tangle. It's like this in tangle form. I know there's different chrome tangles, I've only ever had the silver one. Uh, I think they had a pink and a bronze one at one point. Moving onwards, 
I do forget the name of these, so I will put the name there so you can go and have a look at them online. Uh, but um, one of the ladies at the Trichnik in 2014 gave these to me. I think it might have been Jaya uh, or Neo da Costa. Both of these have bells inside, but one of them is a semitone higher. <laughs> Some people like that. These aren't something I would play with when I need to be in a quiet situation. Back in my childhood, my family and I were on holiday in the Cheddar Gorge, and there was a gift shop with loads of boxes of these, baby versions of these. So for many, many years, I had these and kept them safe in this. When I was a kid, these were the perfect size for my tiny hands, uh, whereas now I find them just a little bit too small. So to be given these made me so happy. In a way, these are a little bit too big, but better to be too big than too small. I know there's a lot in this box, but we are getting there. Time for more tangles. There is one tangle that I had to throw away a couple of years ago, so I'm gonna mention it. I don't have it anymore, and I forget what it's called, but it was this. Hopefully I can find it online. And it was very similar to this in terms of shape and style. Uh, so bits of it were hard plastic, bits of it were soft, squidgy plastic, and uh, the pieces were a lot bigger, so they had a gap, they had a uh, like a compartment in every other bubble, and you could put um, essential oils inside. And it sounded like a good idea. For a long time I played with it just like this, uh, and I sort of ruined it when I added the essential oils. I got really sticky. So eventually, reluctantly, I had to throw it away. It just got too icky in the end. Um, anyway, let's talk about this one. So this, I think, is called the Relax Tangle. Not sure why, but each piece has got the word relax printed on it. Um, and each piece is coated in a sort of jelly textured covering. Um, so again, don't play with it too fast or aggressively because you can burn your fingers. Um, in the sense carpet burn, that's sort of, you know, burning, not, you know, th this, this won't catch on fire. It's all right, it's not, it's not one of my favorite ones. But again, if, if texture's something you like and that helps, then yeah, I recommend this. We have two of these. I'm not sure what they're called. I think they came from the works. I'm not trying to make a gun, I promise. Um, this one's still got the label on, twisty blocks. We have another normal tangle. It's just like this, but a different color. And we have a very big textured tangle. I got this at the Science Museum, probably that same trip where I lost the other one. Um, it was in a big long container. It's okay, it does that. This tangle is very similar to the textured tangle. It is a textured tangle, but not the same. Um, the only difference is it has two different sets of pieces. It has a very sharp, rigid piece and a glow-in-the-dark piece. And yes, it does glow in the dark. It's actually coming apart a bit too easy. You know, sometimes when you get tangles at the very beginning, they are extremely rigid. It takes time for them to go from being mega, mega rigid to this, where they're just flopping all over the place. Um, I know when I have bought these in the past, uh, sometimes when I've taken them all apart, um, it's been really difficult to break them uh, into different pieces and then put them back together. Uh, so if you do purchase a tangle and it does feel too too hard, don't worry, they're all like that. I know I have a few of these, it's a tangle carrier, I'll explain. So what you do is you slip it onto your tangle, put your tangle back together, and then you can pin it um, onto your clothes or a belt, like that. So this is how I took some of my tangles to work and college. So I had them to hand wherever I was, so that's handy. Okay, we're down to the last few bits. This is what's left of a baby tangle I had. I don't even think this was a tangle, I think this was a snake toy in a Christmas cracker, but it's made very similar to the tangles. It's a bit too small to play with, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I kept that. And the very last thing I have in my box, the last thing I can find, because I know I have more stuff somewhere, is Bucky Balls. It's a weird name. I think the company stopped producing these a couple of years ago because children were ingesting these. So that's not a good thing. This is not really for children, I suppose. Uh, but for adults that are careful, this has been so good. I've seen other companies produce these recently, so you can definitely get your hands on these now. There was a period when, when you couldn't though. All these are, are metallic balls. So you can create necklaces, bracelets. You have to be careful though. It's not as, you know, strong 
as a real necklace. And it's very easy to lose the jewellery you make because it's magnetic. I lost one of these in a car once. My brother and I would create shapes with this and when we both had a set we used to create uh, sculptures. Sculptures? And I think that's everything I have, everything that was in this. Um, as I said, there's definitely more around my house somewhere. I am so grateful to have all of this. And yes, I have given away tangles in the past. Um, so don't worry, I haven't held on to every single tangle I've ever bought. In the last two years or so, I have sort of stopped using tangles. One of the main reasons for that is work. So when I used to be a librarian and a steward, I could get away with the jewellery tangles. Uh, but when I worked at Lush and a couple of the other things that I've done, um, it's been quite hard wearing this. Uh, I've only worn my ring, although sometimes actually, no, you're not allowed to wear rings. But whatever, I've, I've sort of cut down on when I've used tangles. I couldn't walk around uh, a shop floor carrying this. Um, so in a way I sort of got used to not using them. Another reason why I think I have not used tangle toys as much is because my hands are always busy. Uh, and I pull primarily when I'm at my computer. I do so much editing. And in the last two years I've done lots of paintings. So again, that uses my hands. So I haven't necessarily needed tangle toys. Um, or they've just not been appropriate for the sort of lifestyle I have. Hopefully that makes sense. I do hope this video has been interesting, and for those of you who knew nothing about any of these fidget toys that I've held up, it's given you some stuff to go and research and uh, investigate. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about here, or any other recommendations for fidget toys, please leave your comments downstairs below. I'd appreciate it, and so would anybody else looking at the comments section. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you ever so much for watching this. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Thumbnail. I have a lot. I mean, I'm 24, and I've been collecting more than half my life. I'm gonna have a lot. Anyway, uh, links. Links there.